Good morning. Good morning, Brother Scott. I'm trying to decide what scripture I want to come from. I've been really feasting on this. Good morning, Sherry. It's starting to do its loopy thing, so just stick with us. I'm going to do my best not to uh, log off and just let it do its looping thing. I'm waiting for people to come on, Brother Scott. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's them grays, Brother Scott. I don't know if you know anything about that, but oh my, I hate them. If you're going to go gray, just go gray, right? So we bless God this morning. Um, I think I am going to go with, there's so, I mean, there's so much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's uh, look at, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at Rome, uh-uh. Do I want to do that? Holy Spirit, help me, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. And what I wanted us to address this morning is talking about, good morning, Sister uh, Edwards, is talking about um, the blood, the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus. I think as the church, we may say the blood or we may declare the blood, but we really may not know what all the blood does for us. This may be a couple of weeks of talking about this because it's so much. It's so much. Good morning, Sister Chastity. It's so much about the blood that we, we need to understand what the blood did for us. And so uh, let's just go into the word. Amen. Um, 505 is my desire to always get started in the word. That's my birthday, May 5th. And so we have a couple of minutes. Invite someone uh, share, tag uh, someone to uh, join us. We have a couple of minutes and we are going to uh, pray and then we are going to uh, get in God's word this morning. Amen. Amen. A breakthrough, Lord. Your people need a breakthrough. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Manifest your promises, Lord. Another moment. Another season. Glory to God. A breakthrough, God. I want us to be convinced that the blood works. We sing the songs, right? Good morning. Good morning. We sing the songs. We sing the songs, but we are not always clear, I think, in, in many areas of our life. Um, convinced, I'll say it that way, of what we're singing. I, I do say sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. Amen. Until you believe what you say. Until you believe what you say and you say it until you see it. And so we love God this morning. Good morning, but um, Sister Sanja. Is it Sanja or Sanya? Sanja. Good morning. We are in Hebrews 9, verse 14. So let's go there now. It is 5.05. Glory to God. Hebrews 9, verse 
14. And the word of the Lord says, <laughs> thank you, you said either. The word of the Lord says, uh, and we'll start in verse, <clears throat> pardon me, verse 11. When Christ appeared as the high priest uh, of the good things to come, sharing the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands. That is to say, not a part of it was created with materials. He went once and for all into the holy place. And so I'm going to jump in uh, blood of goats, not sprinkled with the blood of goats, but through his own blood, having obtained and, sub and secured eternal re redemption. That is salvation unto eternal life to those who believe. Good morning, cousin. To those who believe his blood secured our eternal life. Our salvation to those who believe. Now, what is important is that that was the primary purpose of the blood. No longer could goats and sheep and lamb do it. It often fascinates me when um, I think about the fact <clears throat> that Jesus... I'm getting into teaching. Hold up, y'all. Wait a minute. Let me finish the scripture. Oh, Jesus. So... For if the sprinkling of ceremonial defiled persons and ashes of heifer is sufficient for the cleansing of the body. If ceremonial, sacrilegious, sinful, defiled people, good morning, Julia, coming to agreement with me. This connection keeps wanting to bounce in and out, but we don't keep going. If we who are defiled and impure, if the blood of a goat, a bull, a lamb, a good God Almighty, was sufficient for the cleansing of our body. This is scripture. Again, we are in Hebrews chapter 9. It says, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Holy Spirit, willingly offered himself unblemished without moral or spiritual imperfection how much more was his sacrifice how much valuable how much more valuable priceless is his blood that cleanses not only our bodies but our conscience Whoa, Jesus, that helps me this morning. The blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience. Not only just our physical man, but it cleanses your conscience. Now, the reason I chose the scriptures, because there are many scriptures about the blood. And, and we will be blessed by all of them. But what I wanted to do this morning was for us to truly understand that the blood of Jesus, is it, is it a bad reception? Is it jumping in and out a lot? Julia, somebody, let me know. Because I'm not, on my end, it's not showing me that, that it's a bad connection. It's, I had a little bit of looping a couple of seconds ago. But what it says is that it, the blood of Jesus not only cleanses our body, cleanses us from sin, it also has the power to cleanse our conscience. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. It cleanses our conscience. This is what we need to understand. As I was meditating, as I was studying this, and I said, Lord, we have people. Father, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you are right now, God. You are an on-time God. And there is someone who needs to hear this word immediately. They need it live and in color. They need it live and in person. And it is 5 o'clock in the morning. This is your watch. This is your fourth watch. And God, I ask in the name of Jesus that this 
reception on this broadcast be clear without interruption. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we appropriate the blood. Your blood tells us it has the power, hallelujah, to move the powers and the principalities of the air. So we speak to the prince of the air this morning and we command you to stop in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you. You said where two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing upon anything, you promised to be in the midst of us, and that our Father God in heaven would hear our prayers. God, we would think technology ain't a concern to Jesus. It's not a concern to you, God, but your word is. And your word goes forth with truth, with power, with clarity, without interruption. So we know that the enemy does not want his people, does not want God's people to understand the power of of the blood. So today we come in the spirit of agreement and we say we command the prince of the air to cease and desist in Jesus name. We appropriate the blood over every internet connection, over every person, over their households, in the name of Jesus, over everything that pertains to them, in the name of Jesus, over this connection, over this household, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for who you are, and we love you for who you are, and we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Now go forth and do what you do. We love you today, Daddy, and we thank you that this word shall fall upon good ground and it shall produce 40, 60, and 100 fold, 100, 60, and 40 fold, however you want to say it. Manifest your glory, Daddy. We love you. We love you. We didn't come up at 5 o'clock this, this morning and not love you and not expect you to do what you promised to do. We come by faith and we come in agreement and we say, hey, amen, amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Back to the word. Hebrews chapter 9. It goes on to tell us, uh, we, we picked up in verse 13, talking about the sprinkling of lambs and goats and heifers and, and all of these things for sacrament, um, for ceremonial cleansing. Ceremonial cleansing, which is what we with what would happen when they would go into uh, the, the outer court and the inner court and they would be sprinkled with the blood. And we know that the high priest would go into the most holy place and there would be a lamb sacrificed in there. Uh, uh, now, what we need to understand is before any, any sacrifice could take place, particularly a lamb sacrifice, they would put that lamb off to the side. They would put that sheep off to the side, that lamb, and they would watch it for up to seven days, three to seven days. They would make sure that there were no blemishes. They would make sure that the lamb didn't start to limp. The lamb didn't, wasn't falling over. The lamb didn't grow, have any brown spots that would come on it out of nowhere. Because they wanted to make sure, because they didn't have, they wasn't taking no, no lambs to the vet, okay? So they needed to make sure they would watch, good God Almighty, they would watch the sacrifice. This is why the Bible tells us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. For it is our reasonable act of worship. God, Lord have mercy. The, the lamb, the lamb died. In its reasonable act of worship, we get to live. We get to live. We get to continue to live with our reasonable act of worship to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. No longer do we have to have a goat or a sheep or anything. And we know this to 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 be slaughtered. It was bloody. This is why people often would call the Old Testament of, of Christianity a bloody gospel because they had to kill. I mean, they were constantly killing animals. Good God. They were constantly killing animals to make these sacrifices for their sins. And so uh, what we receive the privilege is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that was without spot, without blemish, holy, nothing wrong. Good God almighty. This is our savior. I don't need, I don't need a pretty little lamb maybe an ugly bull, okay, but a pretty little lamb. We don't need that anymore. And what I was going to say earlier, what has always blessed me, what has always blessed me is that how can the sacrifice, how can the sacrifice be the way, the path, the way, the gate, the sacrifice, the redemption? How can Je Jesus is all of that? He is the way. He is the gate. 
He is the sacrifice. He's the fire, the Holy Spirit. All of that is wrapped up in our God. All of that is wrapped up in our Jesus. And so it is a mighty, mighty privilege to serve this God. We don't have to put an orange or an apple in front of a statue. We don't have to turn and stop and pray twice a day. We can pray all day long if we want to. Pray without ceasing because we have a relationship with our sacrifice. And our, our sacrifice is still living. <laughs> he gave up his life on earth, but he still lives in glory. So the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. It is important that we understand it not only cleanses our bodies, but it cleanses our conscience, our conscience, our eternal way of thinking, this, this, this human self-awareness. This is why I believe there is somebody who needs to hear this. And whether they hear it live, if you're on here, you're hearing it live, or for the person who will hear it later, for who you are going to share, tag, or invite someone to hear. The conscience, it is the inner voice. It is that voice in our head that ain't always, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit don't need to cleanse the Holy Spirit because God Almighty. Your conscience is your inner voice. It, it is the, it, it is, it is connected to your soul. It, it, it involves your, your thoughts and it involves your emotions, which affects your will and makes you do the things that you do. It is where Paul said in Romans chapter 7, the things I know to do, I find myself not doing. But the things I know I should be doing, I, I don't do this, this, this sinful nature. I, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I find myself doing or I know that I, good morning, Lisa, good morning, Annette. Um, the things I know, Linda, the things I know I should be doing, I don't do. He calls himself a wretched man. But who can save me? Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus that can save us from our devices, from our iniquities, our generational patterns and sins. It is the blood of Jesus. The name, the word, his blood. Good God Almighty. And so your conscience, Hebrews chapter 9, tells us that the blood of Jesus not only cleanses our body, it cleanses your conscience. So when someone is suicidal, you need to plead the blood. Thank you for the word. The word, the name of Jesus. But it's the blood. It is the blood that will go and cleanse the conscience. Plead the blood. When somebody is suicidal, I want to take my life. The blood of Jesus, no, you will not. No, you will not. Because the blood uh, has life in it. The blood has purpose in it. The blood says you will live and not die. Someone who is on their deathbed, it is the blood. You plead the blood over them. I command you to come back. I command you to be healed. I command you to be whole. It is the blood. It is the blood of Jesus. It is the blood that is over my nephew who has been diagnosed with autism. And they have a tendency to do something that they call uh, elope and run off. And he had his season that he did it. But it was the blood that brought him back. Good God Almighty. It was Jesus. It was his name. It was the word. And it was the blood. You got to use all three. We thank God that we understand Put the blood on it because it is the word, it, the word of God on it, because it is the word that will not return void. We get that. But I'm telling you today, it is a necessity and it has always been. So for me to say in this hour would not be true. It is just more of a push in this hour that we appropriate the blood. And so this thing called the conscience, it, it is it is our rational Ability. Good morning, Benny. Good morning. It is our rational ability. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. A okay, in the name of Jesus, I need, if you could give me his name, and we definitely will. I believe in pointing prayer. 
I, good morning, Tiffany. I believe in pointing prayer. Uh, yes, uh, when, when God said Lazarus come forth, Lazarus knew that was him. It was plenty of Lazarus in, 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 in the cemetery. Uh huh. But but he knew when his name was called. So, uh, Sanja, give me put your husband's name on here. We will absolutely you plead the blood, too. But we'll come into agreement about your husband. And so the Bible says that it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses our conscience. Hear me when the Bible says in Isaiah 54 that no weapon uh, formed against you shall prosper. In every tongue that rises against you, God will give you the power to condemn. Here you go, Sandra. God is giving you the power to condemn the, the message of that thermometer in Jesus' name. So, Father, we come in agreement. Wall, Wandrew, Wandrew. We come, Brother Wimberly. We lift him up before you right now and we plead the blood. We command his fever to come down in Jesus' name. Whether it's coming by uh, this this, this uh, flu season, whatever is bringing it on, we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God, for the blood of Jesus over his body. And we say from the top of his head to the soles of his feet that fever will break. In Jesus' name, we thank you for Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God who heals. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood. God, just re re revive the blood that is flowing through him, God. Touch his body, God. Bring that temperature down in the name of Jesus, God. Bring him back to his 96 point, whatever he's supposed to be. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for his healing today. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Wimberly, I do hear the Lord saying that your husband does need to rest. Sometimes God... God, I'm not, sometimes God will make us rest. He will lead us beside still waters, right? He will make us rest. And God says that he does need to rest in Jesus name. So if he had to allow something to come because the brother wouldn't sit down somewhere, hallelujah, he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't slow down. So God may have allowed this thing to come to sit him still, but it's going to break in Jesus name. In Jesus name. He is recovered. He is healed. He is whole. Jesus name is upon it. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is upon it. We put the word upon it. Now you keep pleading the blood. You rub on him till he gets healed and whole. Glory to God. We thank you for the blood this morning. We thank you for it still works. It still works. The blood still works. Hallelujah. The blood still works. So we're talking about Hebrews chapter 9, starting in verse 13 through verse 15, where the Bible says that Jesus' blood was perfect. It was perfect. He was, without spot, he was without spot or blemish. He was perfect. Therefore, his blood was perfect. There's but one perfect person, and that is our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so... It goes on to tell us in verse 14 that the blood not only cleanses our body, but it cleanses our conscience. It cleanses our conscience. So whatever we are battling against, whatever we are dealing with in our head, hallelujah, in our, come on back, thank you, in Jesus' name, whatever we are dealing with in our hearts or in our minds, it is the blood of Jesus that can turn it. It is the blood of Jesus that can bring someone's conscience to a state of peace. Okay, so you have a bitter in-law, a bitter ex-spouse. You have whatever it is that is going on in your life. Plead the blood over them. We said the word, Jesus' name, his word, and the blood. Don't Jesus always operate in, I mean, in threes? Good God Almighty. And I think this is a component that as Christians, we have left out. We'll say in a minute, the blood. But do you really, what are you putting the blood on? <laughs> what are you expecting the blood to do? Don't say it if you don't mean it. Don't say it if you don't have faith for it to work, to do what you are sending it to do. You got to target it. You got to be like an arrow a quiver and point that thing to something and say it's going to hit its bullseye. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. So the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Listen, it not only cleanses our conscience, but its primary goal was for us to get into eternal heaven, for us to have eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
through his blood. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. It's ultimately the blood is for us to have this relationship access to God through him for eternal life. It, it's it's it, you no other faith, no other uh, as we call it religion, but truly relationship brings anyone to a place of eternal life. This is why you can have confidence that when you have called upon the name of Jesus and you have believed by faith in your heart and you've spoken it out of your mouth that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That is good news this morning. That when you get to glory, your loved ones, your friends, your family, who have also called upon the name of the Lord, they will meet you there. Because we have a place in heaven. Hallelujah. And, and I always tell people, everybody going, but everybody ain't staying. Y'all catch that on your way home, as Pastor Johnson used to say. So, what we need to understand about the blood of Jesus. there It, it, it cleanses our conscience. It gives us access to eternal life. It gives us access to eternal life. And it gives you the power to conquer the devil. To conquer all the works of the devil. I'm going to teach one day about us sending the devil to hell. Um, people may not uh, agree with what I'm about to say. But when we say I bind the devil... The Bible tells us that Jesus has that power and he's going to do that. What we need to learn how to do is bind the works of the devil. Okay? So the devil be laughing at, at folk when they talk about, I bind you, Satan. He's like, whatever. I know you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Okay? And yeah, exactly. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, we plead the blood. Father, we come in agreement with Blanche Benedict. We speak, God, the healing over her son, Aaron, in Jesus' name, God. We thank you, Father. And we declare, God, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, he is healed, God. In Jesus' name, his life is set in you. We declare a lining up of his blood. We declare a lining up, God, of everything that is in balance will come in balance. We appropriate the blood. Healing is the children's bread. Good God Almighty, we thank you for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you that by Jesus' stripes, Aaron is healed. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Today is a new beginning. Today is his birthday. We celebrate Aaron's birthday. Hallelujah. We say it is a new beginning. It is a Zoe life for, for Aaron, God. We see a turning. We see a shifting. We see him going around the corner. Hallelujah. In Jesus' Jesus name we declare a fresh start God in Jesus name God we thank you for a mother who prays we thank you for a mother who speaks the word we thank you for a mother who is fully equipped hallelujah in Jesus name bless your name oh God we thank you that Aaron is healed eight years old God hallelujah this is Aaron's year and we appropriate the blood from the top of his head, the very tip top of, of the, the hair that's on his head, to the very tip top, very tips of the soles of his feet, God. Glory to God. His big toe. Hallelujah. Dip, hallelujah. Hey, God. Hey, God. Like the children of Israel, when they put their toe into the water, everything divided, everything separated. Hallelujah, God. It was them. Never again was it going to be the same for them. Hallelujah. So God, we say with every step Aaron takes, be the lamp unto his feet and the light unto his pathway. Hallelujah, God. Separate him, God, from those diagnoses. We say there is no dis-ease in Aaron. Hallelujah. There is peace in Aaron. There is joy in Aaron. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, God. We plead the blood this morning. We appropriate the blood. Hallelujah, God. We Jesus, Jesus already sprinkled it. We ain't got to do it anymore. All we got to do is place it on something. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We don't have to be fearful of the blood ever missing, of the blood ever losing its power. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God, agree. We agree. The power of agreement. The power of agreement. The power of agreement where two or three are touching and agreeing upon anything. Jesus has 
promised he would be in the midst of us. Hallelujah. And our God in heaven would hear us. And he will do the thing that we ask. The Bible says that if our heart does not condemn us. Oh, that's good, Jesus. If our heart does not condemn us, we can ask for whatever we will. So right now, God, we plead the blood over our hearts. We plead the blood over our hearts, the hearts that are wicked. That are, that, are, that are deceitful and desperately wicked. We plead the blood over our hearts this morning. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that circumcises our hearts, that gives us a new heart this morning. And we ask for forgiveness, Lord, for anything we said, anything we've done, anything we thought that was unlike you, oh God. And we come into this hour, God, praying and believing, touching and agreeing, oh God. We thank you that the blood is sent to forgive us. Thank you for the blood blood that washes our sins away, makes us as white as snow, cleanses us from the inside out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood this morning. Thank you for the blood this morning. Thank you for the blood over Jordan. Thank you for the blood over, over, um, Hi, y'all, I will say, over Carson. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood this morning. Over Pastor Carolyn, Pastor Hill. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. The blood heals. The blood sets free. The blood makes whole. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood of Jesus over me. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus over Julia. Over Blanche, oh God. Over Sanja, oh God. Hallelujah. Over the pastors in our city. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. For they watch over our soul. And it is us. It is good for us not to bring them burden and not to bring them worry. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, God. We are appropriate the blood, God, over the men's conference on April the 7th. We appropriate the blood, God, over everyone under the sound of my voice, uh, in the name of Jesus, over their every need. Hallelujah. Even over their wants, oh God. Some of them have been waiting a long time. I want to be healed. I want to be free. I want to be delivered. I want to stop lying. I want to stop fornicating. I want to come out of homosexuality. I want to stop stealing. I want to get out of that man's bed that's not my husband. I want to stop being a whoremonger, some man is saying. But I don't know how. So we appropriate the blood this morning. The blood comes to deliver. The blood allows you to defeat the devil in your life. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you. I was going there a little earlier. I didn't forget. I'm coming back. The blood, <coughs> no weapon formed against you will prosper. And the Bible says that it will give you the power. You, you the power. Ha! You the power to silence every voice. To, that raises up against you, every voice in your head, every voice around you, the blood. How does it give you? How does that happen? Well, Colossians tells you in chapter 2, about verse 15, that Jesus, come on, y'all, y'all, We this is why the word is so good. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2 that Jesus disarmed the principalities, the authorities, the powers, the forces operating against you. Ah! Ah! He disarmed them, which means he took the weapons. He took the weapons. He took the weapons of fear. He took the weapons of sickness and disease. He took the weapons of lack. He took the weapons. The Bible says he took them from powers, authorities, and, princi from prin and principalities. And he made a public spectacle of them. He made a fool of them when he went to the cross because he said, if you wouldn't have lifted me up, if you wouldn't have lifted me up. So this is why Colossians 2 verse 15 is why no weapon formed against you can prosper. This is why he will give you the power with your mouth to bring it down. To shut the mouth of the accuser. This doesn't even have anything to do with you being so perfect. And you doing everything right. This is when the enemy has come against you. Your family. Your body. Your job. Your money. Your, your sense of peace. Your household. Your marriage. Whatever he's come against. He said he'll give you the power to condemn him. 
He'll give you the power to shut the mouth of the accuser. The accuser of the brethren is Satan. And so he will give you the power. And God said this is a benefit that we enjoy as servants, as followers of Jesus. <laughs> This is a benefit. I ain't gotta. I ain't gonna be arguing with you. You you not getting ready. I had a I had a situation where someone was coming against my business integrity. I mean, we've all done stuff. I ain't got the best credit score. You know, we all ain't done something, right? We all. But but I try to do right by people. I really do. And this person was just coming, and I'm like, God, in the name of Jesus, the blood. I appropriate the blood against this on this situation. You will not tear down my name. I got a pretty good name. I got a pretty good business name. I got a pretty good ministry name. You're not getting ready to do that just because you mad about something you didn't get that we never agreed on in Jesus name. So when some, when the accuser of the brethren comes, you ain't going to be this. You ain't going to be that. And then again, the blood goes and cleanses our conscience. So before you let somebody, beat you down to the point that you start feeling bad about yourself. Well, maybe I should have did that. Maybe I was wrong. If you know that your heart, we just talked about the scripture that comes from uh, 1 John, I believe, that says, 1 John, if your heart does not condemn you, you can ask for anything. If you know that in your heart, you were trying to do right in that situation, do right by that person, and they keep coming they keep coming for you. Oh, they don't know. You got the blood. <laughs> you got a weapon, honey. You got something in your arsenal that they don't know nothing about. It's called the blood of Jesus, and you better start using it. Ah, with some coming again, the blood. I speak, I appropriate the blood of Jesus over that. You will stop. And Blanche, I need you to use that on you know who. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus comes against that confusion, comes against that drama, comes against that attack, comes against bullying, comes against uh, oppress oppression. We break the back of, of financial oppression. We appropriate the blood because God's word says that we don't have to owe nobody nothing but love. Hallelujah. It is his will that you prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prospers. Oh, we need Jesus. We need the name. We need his word and the blood. This is this is good. I'm getting happy on my own teaching. Good God Almighty. Woo! Glory to God. So he took the weapons. He took the weapons. Now we know that over in, in Ephesians it talks about how we put on the full armor of God. We put on the full armor of God. Hallelujah. We put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We got the sword, the shield of faith. We got the sword of the word. We got the sandals of peace. We got the belt, the, the belt of, of truth. And so we, the Bible says, and when we put on the armor, we can stand against every power, every principality, everything in high places. Ah, I'm going to give you all something else. Your obedience comes against everything in high places because Corinthians tells us that he gives us the power to come against everything that exhausts itself, come on, against the knowledge and the truth of God. And when our obedience has been made complete, we can tell all of that to sit down and shut up. Now, this is again, this is not about you being perfect. This is about you simply obeying God. What has God told you to do? What has he told you to do? What do you need to plead the blood over today? It might be a coworker. It might be a manager. It might be your whole building. <laughs> Jesus. So the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, it allows us to stand against the enemy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror because you have his blood. You are more than a conqueror because you have his word. You are more than a conqueror because you have him. You are more than a conqueror because you have the Holy Spirit. Would you please use the blood? Would you please use the blood? Good God Almighty, appropriate the blood. 
And you can keep doing it. The blood, the blood, the blood is good. Yes, it's a benefit that we get. It's a benefit that we get to be able to use this weapon. There are many weapons that are spiritual weapons. Right now, we're talking about the blood. I could teach all day on the different weapons. Obedience is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Hallelujah. Giving is a weapon. <laughs> so, so you can use the weapons of, of, for spiritual warfare to pull down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge and the truth of Jesus Christ. So, the blood this morning. Because of the blood of Jesus... Because of the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is he messing with the, the reception again? See, it's clear over here. So you still clown and devil, go sit down. Prince of the air, we command you to stop. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because of the blood of Jesus, you are sanctified. You are set apart. You are set apart. This is, again, why no weapon can be formed again. You are shrouded. You are cloaked <laughs> by the blood of Jesus. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is why the blood washes us and makes us as white as snow. Not because we're perfect and it cleanses our conscience. He cleanses us. He washes us and makes us as white as snow. Then he goes in because the Holy Spirit is in us and we are, our, our conscience is clean. See, this is why you can say, my hands are clean, my heart is pure, because your conscience is clean. Because you know you didn't intentionally do that thing, and if you missed it, you know how to go back and say, hey, I'm sorry, my bad, forgive me. You know, so the Holy Spirit is in you. This is why you can use the blood. Oh, I can't plead the blood because I'm raggedy, boo. And we are raggedy, except Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is life. He is the gate. He is the sacrifice. He is the fire <laughs> that the sacrifice is put on. He's the altar that the sacrifice is put on. Yes, yes, yes. Tag, share, invite somebody. Somebody needs to understand the power of Jesus, the blood of Jesus this morning. So we can conquer the devil. We can, we can understand that, that, that because of Jesus' suffering, in order for us to be sanctified by his blood, that is in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, around verse 12, it is through his blood that we are sanctified. We are set apart. And, oh, that's good. We are sanctified. We are set apart over that anxiety, Alicia, over her anxiety. Over her anxiety, we plead the blood over her anxiety in Jesus' name. And we say there is peace to her mind. There is peace to her heart. There is peace to her ability in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We declare it. We declare it over your daughter, Alicia Bruno. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because of the blood, we can conquer the devil. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. We, we can conquer that. This is why I need y'all to quit saying I'm a sinner. I need y'all to stop saying that. Because you're not a sin. Well, I don't know. Well, let me say it like this. <laughs> if you've confessed Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you are no longer a sinner. You, you were a sinner who has been saved by grace. Okay, you, you must stop saying that unless you are just living a sinful life, unless your life is full of sin every day, you doing something that look like sin. I remember a sister. I said that and she said, Mr. Tate, I, I guess I am a sinner. I said, well, why do you say that? She said, because I, I live with my boyfriend. So every day. Transparency. That's what she said. She said, and I don't want to be a sinner because the blood of Jesus did too much for me. That's not what she said. She said, Jesus has done too much for me. And I said, the blood of Jesus covers that. You, you get your money, you get your ends together so you can find your own place. And if he loves you, he'll help you get your ends together so you can find your own place. So you can put your deposit down. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. And so I said, stop saying that. Even now. While you are preparing, you have made up your mind. Your obedience will put everything in disobedience into obedience. And her daughter was out of order. 
Her daughter was totally out of order. They got into their own place. She, she anointed that place, start pleading the blood over her child and over her house. Honey, she just a little princess now. Mama, what you need? Mama, how can I help you? Yeah, because you put the things that were in disobedience in obedience. And now your obedience is made, made complete, according to Corinthians, and you can speak to disobedience. And your blood, the blood of Jesus becomes effective. Ah! Ah! The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. Our righteousness has nothing to do with us. But God loves us because when we say, I'm wrong in that way. I want to be right in that way. Lord, I'm weak. Help me. Blood, the blood of Jesus, go to that thing and help me. Help me because, because, because it is the blood of Jesus that delivers us. I'm telling y'all, I get happy. I get, I, get I, can just, I can just do church by myself. The blood of Jesus rescues us from the life of sin. The blood of Jesus rescues us, delivers us from a life of sin. God is not tripping. God is not tripping. With, honestly. God is not tripping when you stumble. It's if you stay there. God is not tripping if you fall. As long as you don't fall back and stay there. He's not tripping that you that you stepped into something. You got involved in something. God is not tripping. His grace is sufficient. He loves you. Just don't backslide. <laughs> Just don't 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 do the cupid shuffle on that boy. Don't stay there. Okay? Get up out of that thing. You recognize it? Okay, this ain't cool. I don't want to stay in this because I'm not a sinner. I was a sinner, and I've been saved by grace. The blood of Jesus has saved me. The blood of Jesus has cleansed me. Good God Almighty, the blood of Jesus has set me free. My, and I want my conscience clear. I want my conscience clear so that when I go to God, I know that God will hear me because I'm not living a life of sin. I'm not living a life of sin. This is why I tell people. I don't trip on people who are in the lifestyle of homosexuality. I love them. I love God's people. I love all of them. I love the person who's who's in adultery. I love the person. God loves you, so I love you. I love the person who's fornicating. I don't know about the person that's molesting kids and raping. God, God, God going to have to help me on stuff like that, I guess. Because I, I guess I can hate the sin and love the person. But, you know, I was going to school. I was going to law school. And thus, in the name of Jesus, I I, um, I wanted to be a defense attorney. And um, I remember when I talked to an attorney and they said, you'll probably have a season that you'll have to work in the um, public defender's office. And you may have to defend rapists and child molesters. I said, no, nah, that's okay. I don't. Mm -mm. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that because I've been to set you up so that you see. Y'all got to pray for me. I'm still saved. I was saved. But I was for real. I've been and made sure you lost because I don't. Mm -mm. So, but God loves all of us. He loves us. And so when God has allowed me to minister to people who are in the struggle, who say, I'm struggling. I don't want to be in this adulterous relationship. I know it's wrong. I don't want to be in this homosexual relationship, but I have these desires. I don't know what to do with them. What do I do? I don't want to fornicate. I don't want to keep doing this. And, and, and I just need help. I don't want to keep stealing. I don't want to keep lying. I don't want to, whatever it is, whatever their thing is, I know I got a stank attitude, but what do I do with it? I know that I can be prideful and arrogant. I can be mean spirited. What do I do with it? The blood, the word of Jesus. And the name of Jesus. You just keep pleading it. You keep putting it on it. And one day, I promise you, you will wake up and that thing will be gone. And God, listen, this is going to help somebody. God honors the fact that you keep coming saying, Lord, help me. He honors the fact that you have gone three days, five days, ten days, twelve days, two weeks, three weeks, a month, three months, and you didn't fall. He honors that. And you kept saying, Lord, help me. I don't want to go back to those weak and miserable ways. He honors that. So don't allow the enemy to beat you up. No weapon formed against you 
the words of the enemy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Should we go on sinning so that grace may abound? Certainly not. Certainly not. <laughs> she said, I don't know how to love the rapist and the child molester. To be honest, I don't want to... <laughs> she said, she don't want revelation over that area. I'm with you, Jessica. Like I said, I'm... That would be hard for me, too. Yeah. Yeah. So you... Yeah. That's why you give them... That's why you give them the God and you... You let, that's why his ways are above ours. They're above finding out. And some stuff, I just we just got to leave with him. So we definitely can cry out for justice in Jesus' name. And because God is a loving God, his justice is going to be perfect. Yeah. So, so but what, what I'm getting at is uh, people who are in sin, including you, including me, including everyone under the sound of my voice who have our own struggles. It is okay. It's a good thing that you're struggling. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Because we can put the blood on your struggle. But if you just gave yourself over to whatever that thing is, we can stop, probably still appropriate the blood. But where's the word? Where's the name of Jesus? So it, it, it's, it's almost like putting perfume on a dirty body. Take a shower. Get cleansed. The blood cleanses us on the outside and the inside. That's just good news this morning. That should make somebody feel good this morning. That should get some thumbs up. Hallelujah. That should get some hearts. That is good news. God cleanses us on the inside and the outside. We don't have to trip on this thing. No longer saying, I am a sinner. I am a sinner saved by grace because it has saved me. It has washed me. It has made me as white as snow. The blood of Jesus. You're going to stop that buffering thing. So it rescues us from sin. The blood, it is good. The blood, the blood, the blood is good. The blood is good. And we need to access the blood. So, as we come to the last seven minutes of our time together, I want to pray. I want to pray. We certainly have had uh, some opportunities to pray earlier. But, um, um, I, I want you to understand the Bible says that in, in uh, what is it, Romans chapter eight, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no guilt. There is no there is no punishment that, that comes because for those he loved, he predestined because you have this personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You have the blood of Jesus. You have the ability to escape bondage. You are no longer bound to sin. We are no longer bound to sin. We have a life that we can live through the Holy Spirit. There is now. There, Therefore, there is now. Why is therefore there? It is there because in Romans 7, that is where Paul, which I spoke of earlier, is where Paul is saying the things I know to do uh, that are right, I, I don't seem to do. The things that I, I know I shouldn't be doing, I find myself doing. He says, he says who can save me? Who can cleanse my conscience? <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, Jesus, I think it's the Amplified of the Message Bible says, who can cleanse my conscience? Who can take away the guilt of stain for the stuff I know I should not be doing? Who can do it? It's the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Who can save me? He said Jesus. He had a revelation. Jesus cleanses my conscience. My con science. We going to go against science today. We're going to go against science today. Science that tells you you have to be punished for your want wrong. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift, the gift, the gift, the grace of God because of the blood of Jesus is eternal life. we gonna come, we going to come against science. Conscious. We are going to come against science this morning. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience. Our con science. <laughs> You've been tricked. You've been conned. That you got to keep going back and trying to re and, and somebody making you remember what you've done. No, we ain't got to do that. God says that he forgives our sins. The blood, the blood makes us right that our sins are forgiven. The blood is why Jesus 
Come on now. I'm finna help. Jesus, y'all. Oh, man. When, when, I, when God starts speaking to me, my head starts itching. Woo! This is good, Daddy. The Holy Spirit just said to tell you. This is why God said he can cast your sins as far as the east is from the west and remember them no more. This is why. Because your sins have been forgiven. They've been forgiven. They're under the blood. So he remembers them because he can't. He doesn't remember them because he can't see them. Because they're under the blood. Woo, Jesus. That's good news this morning. Woo, that's good news. That made, oh, Jesus. This is why. This is why. Because east and west never meet. They never meet. And so he said, I'll cast them as far as the east is from the west. And I won't remember them. Because the blood of Jesus covers them. He forgives your sins. He forgives your sins. He wipes away your iniquities. He covers your generational curses and habits and struggles. So right now, God, I come against every spiritual uh, uh, thing, wickedness, principality, powers in high places. And we appropriate the blood in Jesus name. Every iniquity, every generational habit, every generational spirit. We appropriate the blood on it, including lack diabetes, high blood pressure, the stuff that's come through their bloodline, we appropriate the blood. Hallelujah. Young, uh, uh, I hear the Lord saying uh, miscarriages are high in your family. We come against that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Divorce, we come against that. We appropriate the blood of Jesus over marriages whom God is joined together. Let no man separate. The womb is blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is there the, those whose quiver is full of children. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We come against hormonal diseases, uh, thyroid conditions, uh, fibromyalgia, fibroids, uh, everything that is as a, um, a hormonal condition. We appropriate the blood over it in Jesus name. Hallelujah. We say that you are healed and you are whole in Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, we call forth depression. We speak to mental illness this morning, and we appropriate the blood, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, hallelujah, manic behaviors, hallelujah. We come against mental illness this morning, and we appropriate the blood. We declare that you have the mind of Christ in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have a beautiful mind in Jesus' name. We place your thoughts under the blood. And we say that you think of things that are holy, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that have a good report, and things that are from above. Hallelujah. We come against drug addiction that's in the bloodline. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. I ask God that the blood be put on their tongue. That the very desire to smoke crack, to drink alcohol, to use any substance, God, that they are trying to pacify a pain, to take away a pain, to suppress a pain. Hallelujah, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God, that you become their joy. You become their peace. We appropriate the blood in Jesus' name, and we say that that addiction be broken in the name of Jesus. Cancer in the bloodline. Hallelujah. We tell you to go in Jesus' name. We speak to those cancer cells. Hallelujah. That want to set itself up in the breast, God. Hallelujah. In the feminine organs, in the in the male organs, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And in, in, in the in the bowel of, uh, uh, in the bowels, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God, in the colon, in Jesus' name, God, we speak, God, that cancer is eradicated by the blood of Jesus Christ in that bloodline. We come against it today. Who can save us? Jesus. By his grace, we are saved. By his blood, we are saved. Because of his blood, we are saved. Our conscience is clear. Our soul is is set free. Our minds are right. Our hearts are clean. They've been circumcised this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our emotions are balanced in Jesus' name. We're not going to be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication, we're going to make our requests made known unto you and your peace, your peace, your peace, the peace that comes by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
that surpasses all understanding. It's going to guard his heart and mind in Jesus, Jesus' name. We come against that uh, sexual assault uh, that has come against a bloodline. Hallelujah. The mama was raped. The daughter was raped. The granddaughter, in Jesus' name, molested, taken advantage of, hallelujah, abused, domestic violence. We come against that. We say, arise, O oh sleeping giant of a woman. Hallelujah. Be the warrior that God has called you to be in prayer. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we appropriate the blood over that. We say no more. It stops today. Everything that was in our bloodline, hallelujah, everything that was in our bloodline. We say that if it did not glorify God, if it did not look like God, if it did not represent God, if it did not was not a type and shadow of Jesus, we appropriate the blood of Jesus over it. We put the word of God over it and we declare the name of Jesus over it. This is our prayer today. And we, we will, we will apply and appropriate the blood of Jesus Christ. We love God today. I love you, Jesus. I love you more today than I did on yesterday. You are a great, awesome, and a mighty God. I appropriate the blood over my family, my brothers, my sisters, my mother, my niece, and my nephews, God. We put the blood over the doorposts of our homes, over the threshold of our homes. Hallelujah. We pray for the safety of everyone under the sound of my voice today. They're going in and they're coming out. They're rising. They're lying down. We thank you, Lord. And we love you. Keep our family safe. Keep us safe. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. And we love you today, Daddy. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your blood. I pray that this word is falling up on good ground. And I pray that it was applicable that it was imparted, and it is importable. And you can take it with you today. And remember, the blood still works and apply it over your life. Sanja, make sure you inbox me. Let me know that that fevered and broke and your husband is well. But don't forget, make that make that chocolate man rest, okay? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Make that man. I, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming he chocolate. Your husband. How about that? Amen. We love you all. I love you. Bless you, Crystal. Bless you, bless you, bless you, Pastor Kim. You all have a great day.